well, thank you, Aksha, for giving me the opportunity and uh, coming and sort of having this session with me. Um, so, as you know, that C Square has been there around for about 12 years. I co-founded it, and I was a CEO for, till about very recent. I stepped down uh, because there are other things that we had to sort of uh, take care of. Um, so, C Square has been a very interesting journey. It's you know a Pakistani company, a year-on-year -year profitable company, growing company. Um, so we basically in Pakistan we've been providing customer experience management solutions, CRMs uh, to majority banks and then obviously we work other than banks as well uh, but we have about 80% banking uh, market share in Pakistan. Um, it's grown, the company is growing and it's grown uh, quite a bit. Uh, we've grown in geographical regions as well so we've worked in the Middle East, we worked very actively in Saudi Arabia now. Uh, we work with through partners, local partners over there, but we work with the Ministry of Trade, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and you know all of those entities. Uh, these years the plans are quite aggressive to perhaps move there locally into Saudi because that's something that the direction we see in the market happening. So I think um, Saudi is a place where there is generational wealth to be made today. If you go there today, I mean I think we should be there yesterday. Uh, and. Uh, it's every 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 company operating in Pakistan should be in Saudi Arabia right now, locally or indirectly or directly there. Um, that's a region or market I see very popular right now, and it's going to grow. And the amount of money there is there right now is phenomenal, right? You have your uh, Bahrain and uh, these other territories, Kuwait, Qatar. Uh, again, there is a lot of movement happening there. There's a lot of business uh, happening there, uh, despite the economic downturn. Um, I see that these Gulf countries will still uh, thrive and survive um, and I keep telling people survival is the new growth, right? Um, so if you can survive, you've grown, right? I mean, so that's how I see, I think Middle East, Saudi primarily is number one and then Bahrain and Kuwait and Qatar, these are big markets that we should always look at. All right. Then right? So your question was about the economic downturn, your question was about, um, you know, whether companies are looking to go international. But how about looking the other way around? Pakistan has always imported technology, right? We import Microsofts, IBM, SAP, and all of that. Why not create local technology? So this is what I've been busy with now. Okay. Um, so what we're doing is uh, we are actually productizing or commercializing academic research, right? And we have some fantastic use cases that we have, you know, proven track records. So think, ek to ye cheez hoti hai, aap se bol raho ki main uh, but that's not the case. Uh, we've competed with IBM Watson's in the market. We've competed with Yellow.ai. Yellow.ai is Gartner's number one conversational AI product platform, which we outperform them in one of the accounts over here. Um, then, uh, you know, there are technologies like contactless biometric. We're using international vendors. So I won't name a customer, but it's a big customer in Pakistan whereby uh, they, they issued an RFP and they said that, um, you know, we want contactless biometric for digital onboarding, mm -hmm. right? So when I, uh, we submitted a proposal there, we were four companies. One was us, which was a locally developed product versus three other companies that were international. And I don't want to name the international brands, but they're big brands um, uh, there. So when I went to that customer and I said that, you know, why aren't you evaluating us? And they said that you don't have any references. You only have two references. And I said, look, I mean, we made this product about four weeks ago. We have two references, but let's take it this way. I talk on empirical evidence. Here is the SDK. Use the product and let me know. And, and I'm confident they'll be as better at, at par or better than any international product. They use the product and uh, within three days, they give me a call and they said, this is a fantastic. The user experience is better than the international best in date. So that was one reason why they gave the project to us. And the secondary was the price, obviously, because right now sitting in Pakistan, you can't be paying dollars. Uh, and obviously remitting that dollar is a pain uh, right now and a challenge right now for all the organizations. So why not create local assets and um, export that local? So, you know, uh, I'll tell you, so basically, uh, there are two, three uh, sides to it, right? So I was, I'm working with the Ministry of Science and Technology right now. And uh, when they asked me that, you know, what do you do? And I told them that I prioritize academic research and they said, oh, wonderful. That's what we're looking for. Why hasn't Pakistan been able to build a hundred million dollar or five hundred million dollar couple of companies? And, uh, you know, there are very evident reasons for that. And I told them, I said, look, number one, you cannot expect the academia to create a commercially viable product. You can only expect the academia to create a prototype, right? 
from a prototype that will be taken into commercially viable product by private entities who are into the market, who are into the system and who understand. Number two, you are expecting the academia to paint uh, or to be an artist, right? by them to identify a problem and them to solve the problem. What if that problem is not worth solving? What if that problem is, uh, the return on that problem is not worth solving? What if the problem that they're trying to solve is too long a problem that before they try to solve it, someone else solves it, right? So I think, uh, and, and very interesting dialogue that we're having with the Ministry of Science and Technology where we are sort of working with them and sort of telling them that, you know, I mean, the private sector is in the market, they can identify the gaps. Just like my company, ISM AI, has done. We've identified gaps, we've identified opportunities in the ecosystem, and we built products on that. Now, when we built products, we competed with international technology. We beat some of the international technology, and we won those customers, right? So those are track records, those are proven case studies that are in front of you. So why don't you rather than so so the private sector should give the problem, the identify the problem and 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 say that this is the problem that needs fixing. Give this problem to the academia. Invite them to send you a prototype, right? And how they will solve this problem. And then invest in it once the prototype is there and take it to them. So we are working with venture capital as well, who are from the Middle East and other regions, who are looking to partner with Pakistani academia, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, because obviously we have a good academia, it's rusting. Um, leveraging that is some way or the other. You know, I think uh, it, we need influx of money investment. So once we understand the problem that they're trying to solve, once they come up with a prototype, the prototype's acceptable, then you fund it, right? And that's, I think, where you will uh, be able to take churn the uh, uh, real potential of this. And you know, the other thing also, I mean, you know, we will say, yeah, it's a lot of work, everyone academia and industry. Ne kara. But yeah, industry is very selfish at times, I personally feel. Yahan pe, uh, forget industry, from look at a perspective that within one organization, I will not hire a person who, you know, generally the practice is that I will not hire a person who is more smarter than me because X, Y, Z, because, you know, I don't want to be challenged. Similarly, um, the industry, what it does is it wants to make profits, right? So it will uh, try to cannibalize the academia in one. It'll use the academia, it'll give them the peanuts, right? And they'll take the biggest benefit themselves. Right, so in that case, um, there has to be sincerity, right? So when there's no sincerity, then you will obviously try to be uh, trying to get the whole, the whole deal for yourself, right? So I think uh, it has to be a balance, and, uh, and and I've been hearing this academia linkage and all of this, and 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 and, and finally, I think we get to do something here in this area, and <clears throat> with the alongside the Ministry of Science and Technology, uh, Pakistan Science Foundation or Science Fund. Uh, we're working with them as well. Um, so, you know, I mean, there is a tons of potential. I mean, for C-Square, we've been exporting services into the Middle East for 12 years. We've had an amazing, I mean, our partner Genesis recommends us to our global partners over there to implement. So if you're doing services, we're shining in that domain, why can't we make products, right? And, and we have those track records and we've succeeded on those track records. So it's just about funding the right people, funding the right ecosystem, um, to be able to sort of, you know, uh, get the benefit of it. Yeah, so, so look, I mean, it has to be a balance, right? I mean, um, so, um, you know, so I think um, it's, so it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's actually a cash 22 here because in, in one of my companies, C-Square, where we do contact centers, we do call centers, human interactions and everything, the other company we are looking at uh, sort of deploying uh, conversation chatbots, chatbots that can emulate human behavior, right? Not only emulate human behavior, one, but also chatbots or speech bots that are human voice, right? So they are not they're not robotic voice anymore. They're just human voice, just you and me are talking now. Just like you and me are talking, we um, switch languages, right? Normally, bots are not able to handle that. With what we've created, it's able to handle that. Real time, while I'm conversing in English, the second question I ask in Urdu, or in one sentence I say in Urdu and English, the bot will understand. Normally bots globally, you've seen you have to select a language. Then digression. You and me, we digress from question one to question two to question three. The bot is capable to come back to question one and ask if you're done with question one and question two before you go to question three. So, you know, that's the amount of uh, um, um, sort of, uh, human element that we've been able to put into the bot, right? 
uh, why people resisted talking to bots was because it was very robotic it was very artificial just more, the other day my brother was telling me he was he lives in the uk and he was telling me that he was talking to, to he was some service that he was trying to do some cable service internet service and when he was talking it was actually a bot and uh, my brother was trying to sort of you know speak to an agent and he was just saying okay, i want to speak to an agent and the bot replied and said you don't need to speak to an agent when i'm telling you this is what it is and this is what it is right i mean so that's the amount of intelligence that you can build into this system right so i think uh, as ism uh, our objective is to teach machines what humans are able to do right so teaching machines what humans are able to do is the forte is the game that we're doing and ml and ai is primarily uh, like let me give you an example <clears throat> like for example uh, even your cctv camera cctv camera is sunk cost right everyone has invested in cctv cameras so they're sunk cost people are sitting monitoring them mm-hmm. just add a layer of ai into it right uh, you can create uh, customized ml models and you can say that you can build intelligence whether the sentiments of those people within my branch uh, what purpose they came into my branch were they happy was there any fight was there any argument was there any out of the blue um, scenario uh, was there a, a person who traveled into a no go area uh, was there a gun detected for example you don't need to change the infrastructure you don't need to change the hardware existing hardware you can create these ml models right so uh, with ai um, you know and ai actually and you know prior to a couple of years ago when i was also on the um, uh, at the pm's office i was advising them on uh, emerging tech and its relevance uh, to national security um, if as a nation we don't uh, select a niche in ai we are irrelevant to the globe right and we need to get into that and 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 we are to some extent but we're getting into its silo as a nation collectively we really need to do something so um there are few project deployments so i mean i can't specifically name right now because um, uh, some of them are actually a bit uh, confidential under the radar but some of them that where we competed with uh, so from some of the financial institutions that we competed um, we competed uh, with eight other companies and out of those eight there were four international um and the best in breed international right and there was a whole evaluation matrix created by the bank for selection and uh, we were able to score 100 out of 100 versus um, your blue chip companies was 73 out of 100 75 on 100 so <clears throat> so now we're going on the deployment phase for that um then um one of the i mean i i can actually in fact i can name this one uh, cdc central depository company so huge entity um cdc was going for the best in breed uh, contactless biometric technology um that's where actually i came in and i told them i said look we have something better than any international product and the price is far more better uh, they used it and the experience was far more superior than the international and they selected our technology right cdc is one um in addition to that we we working a lot so we signed a cloud plat- platform partner called um uh just give me a second i just forgot the name of it so they're based out of the uh, out of the uk um so we've actually um signed up with them they are actually going to put our products onto their um, cloud marketplace right so so that's uh, you know so that's potentially that and then plus we've also created things like you know for example um uh, there there are very interesting projects that we were able to do uh, for national disaster management authority uh, we gave them a a whole proposal just before the floods uh, and it's very unfortunate that it didn't really materialize um how to predict uh, national calamities earthquake wildfire drought and floods just four months before the flood happened uh-huh. and uh, all local technology nothing foreign right and uh, it was basically uh, it was more machine learning models um and and satellite imagery and all cloud ground movement and all of those things and we gave a comprehensive solution but nothing really happened that was one second very interesting um, problem and and as a company or as a dna myself i love solving problems right so uh, pakistan railway had come up with the problem of accidents right they had accidents they had a lot of accidents how to prevent accidents now pakistan railway as you can understand um being a government institution there are a lot of challenges so they said okay we want to install some device that can actually prevent accidents so obviously they have gang members over there their repair members or the team members who basically uh, if there's any uh, 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 technology used for creating insights and giving more insights to the management they'll just, they'll throw hot oil on it 
to destroy it right so they said okay is there a way that you can create something hidden and yet we can predict uh, or we can prevent accidents so we said yeah we can and we did so what we did was we took a locomotive engine of a of a train in pindi and uh, we took, we installed some cameras on the uh, uh, at the bottom of the locomotive and now and it's hidden really and it's got some sensors so what it does is and then there's a device called lora van lora van is actually it sends packets of internet where there's no internet available so what we do is that we 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 stuck this device on the locomotive now real time this locomotive is looking at the track health so this camera is looking at the track health and it's seeing so what we are training the machine is that this is what a track looks like the ideal track this is what an anomaly looks like so if there's a crack if there's a high density of stones if there's you know some um other crap on the track or if there's a crack in the rail or there's a nut bolt that's loose those are anomalies so as soon as the camera sees an anomaly on the track it will close the track at the back right because there is some fixing that requires here right because so no not the staff couldn't tamper with this because they don't know where it's where the technology is it's inside the locomotive literally so these are some of the problems that we were solving <clears throat> some obviously because of the change in regime that happened we it didn't put um, uh, materialize in sense it didn't go, go to a commercial thing it did happen in a pilot thing but it was a, there's only globally one company that does this by the way it's uh, it's, it's in Sweden right and they're very expensive and they actually the ministry of railway tried to contact them um but they were very expensive and we actually studied them so i have so i have some great minds in my team um <clears throat> jinko mein mazak mazak mein tare zameen pe bhi bolta hu um so these guys are uh, all they do is they read academic research and uh, one of my partners from the age of 13 he does he reads as a hobby phd academic research papers our machine learning head uh, uh, he worked for the french government uh, for the smart grid projects he worked for the german military for the smart swarm drone formation um so we've got you know talent in pakistan uh, and you know somehow i attract talent i find talent um and and the biggest thing is to actually promote that talent right which people don't do when people say them um ek to log criticism nahi lete so yeah and i love it when a junior boy would come to me or a new guy would come to me and say sir ye aapne galat kar diya isko is tarah nahi kare isko is tarah kare i would love if someone comes and tells me that because i will learn and i'll learn a new perspective of his so i mean you know we have that talent we just need to nurture that uh, talent uh, unfortunately there is a talent drain happening because we don't the local ecosystem does not give them the opportunity right so it's unfortunate but uh, i think that uh, now with the economic uh, you know how the times are uh, localization will really pick on i think creating local uh, products and exporting them um so i think scarcity scarcity is the mother of all inventions right so uh when i was working i was working for genesis i was working for teradata before that and uh genesis was actually there's an um, uh, acquisition happening so they were letting go of people so you know that was jobless and then that's when you know the thought of starting something came but i think um <clears throat> personally in life if someone is really pushed um obviously uh, my other half for sure uh because you need them to support you more than anything else uh but other than that i think uh, i would give credit to shabir baksa musa saab um, he is really someone who i really admire and i, I learn a lot from him wakarul islam saab um, again a great person to have as a mentor a great person to give you a guiding guidance throughout tabis saba uh, my ex ex boss so these guys i think uh, they've been uh, very sort of supportive of our business and of telling us as to you know uh, how to expand and what to do so yeah i mean you always need such people and my father as well uh, probably i would know i mean he should be the first person but yeah my father as well so you see um what i feel is that right now and i see this within my own uh, set of companies right i mean and i've talked to other companies that you know the big large companies in pakistan that are working with you know microsoft ibm sap and all these global brands now they are struggling right they are struggling a the local customers are struggling in terms of paying that dollar value right uh the feasibility really uh, decreases the other is the at this point in time the country needs us more than anything else so we need to be sincere to our country 
बहुत सारे तरह तरीके हैं दैट पीपल आर यूजिंग आई लीगल मीन्स ऑफ सेंडिंग मनी आउट राइट हवाला एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट वॉट इज इट डूइंग इट्स एक्चुअली रूनिंग आर कंट्री इट्स एक्चुअली रूनिंग आर वेर वी एक्चुअली वट दिस ग्राउंड दिस नेशन गेव आस ब्रेड एंड दिस नेशन गेव आस आर हाउस वाई आर नॉट वी वी नॉट बींग सिंसियर टू दिस आई डू अंडरस्टैंड दैट थिंग्स नीड टू मूव ऑन थिंग्स नीड टू हैपन सो येस फॉर सम टाइम बींग दीज प्रैक्टिस विल टेक प्लेस but it's not sustainable for the long term um because we need to now and i think you know i mean we have again said this multiple times that technology is and can be a savior of uh, a lot of our problems a lot of our problems we are not just taking it that seriously right now um we need to reduce this import why can we not create now the thing is that unfortunately why we have not been able to create products up till now because already why because a r&d r&d requires a lot of money you see r&d companies require a lot of money states are not ready to do r&d right they say ke yaar customer lao aur product banao aur becho right now usme in that philosophy you can never create a product we've always seen that uh, you know these small erps or small crms are created by these two people companies um with with a specific customer in mind but they don't have a product road map in mind they don't have a, a, a proper road map as to where this product is going to go it's specific to the customer so i see that um, this whole situation is going to see a decline in uh, I, i know a lot of businesses by the way a lot of companies who stop doing uh, 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 you know microsoft reselling for example who stop doing a few other things because it's a big pain for them to be able to remit that large amount of money and then obviously it's a big pain for the customer to sustain that uh, because obviously with a huge amount of devaluation um um i think it's it's just it just doesn't make sense to import and this is where i feel that for once i uh, you know i hope sincerely i mean we are working with uh, the government on some levels but sincerely i hope that we are able to collectively come and solve this problem because i swear to you um let me give an example sip protocol sip protocol secure internet protocol the world uses it today you know that it was created by a student in military college of signals in pindi right the a british company came and acquired that product did a file a patent for it voila they own it now the world uses it now why can't we do these things why couldn't we patent this technology why couldn't we um because the thing is because hum log na very short sighted na we are a trading nation we are a service nation so yeah we are a trading nation 2 rupees ki cheez 2.5 rupees mein dena ya hum service nation hai ki bas ye karte rahe humne kabhi ye nahi socha ki yaar long term kya hoga aur long term ke liye investment karni padti hai wo investment koi karna nahi chahta wo kehta hai ki bhai maine aur jo typical set hai wo kehte hai bhai main apna textile ka kaam kar raha hu main ye 100 rupees ki cheez 200 rupees mein bech raha hu ya 150 rupees mein bech raha hu main khush hu right to wo jo and now i think um I mean, there was a lot of lessons learned from me as well uh, in the R and D space, um, and then I guess you learn from mistakes and you learn from um, and, uh, you know and you recover from mistakes. The thing is, people are fear they fear failure, right? And I tell people that yeah, you will fail a hundred and fifty times if you succeed once. You'll fail a hundred and fifty times. It's all about how quick you rise back again from that failure and get back onto the track. if you keep just if you fail and you put your head down and you don't do anything you don't do anything you, you won't learn and you won't be able to see the upside of anything so um it's but it's been a wild roller coaster ride uh, so um, uh, from every aspect so you see uh, so i've had close exposure to startups um, one of the big startups that actually unfortunately closed uh, airlift was actually made in this office um, so they were actually <laughs> sharing our space You see, um, a lot of money came into Pakistan, and a lot of investments came into Pakistan, and um, a lot of these startups are co-founders are twenty four, twenty six years old who've never seen that much money. You see, and suddenly they get at insane valuation. They get influx of money coming in. They don't know what to do with that money, right? And they overspend. and they overspend in fantastic offices in uh, trainings in foreign trips in god knows when i've seen i don't want to name but i've seen the the amount of exuberant expenses that have been done now if you give the same amount of money to a 40 year old or a 50 year old you know who's who's seen that journey 
um, and who knows the importance of that money and how they need to plan it out. I think it will be more of a better bet. Um, but you know, um, downsizing has to happen, right, because the economic situation is as such right now. With the inflation rate, uh, people don't have disposable income. Um, so, you know, I, I personally feel that a lot of shared services would come up now. A lot of shared services in every aspect of life would start coming up now. Those would be doing very well. Um, um, but the downsizing is meant to happen. It's not about only startups. I think it's the big companies are going to downsize anyways. Uh, the giants are going to downsize. The big IT companies are going to downsize because um, of the economic downturn. I mean, even globally, um, uh, there is economic downturn. Even the UK right now, the inflation is all-time high. In the US, the inflation is all-time high. So I think all of those things, um, um, it's not only applicable to the startup, it's applicable to the large enterprises who now uh, don't have that much demand, right? I mean, for example, if you see retail, right, um, uh, the disposable income a household has now is less than what it was a year ago, right? Um, uh, so all of those things make a big difference contributor to the thing. And so downsizing will happen. Um, but at the same time, I think it's about how do you spend, where do you spend? You know, uh, we need to really change our mindset in terms of why international is best. Why international is better. It's just better because it's got that stamp of international. Mm -hmm. All right. And then, sorry, one more thing um, I, I should have said before is that Localization, yes, localization ho jai, but then we are government and as, we need to change things. Uh, ke, ye pepra ke rules hai, so yeah, they need to change them, right? Uh, ki you need to have these many references, you need to have international uh, requirements, ke international ke ho, those need to change. Then in the ecosystem, you need to promote the, um, the smaller players who are, who are building things, but who are capable to build things um, because those are your assets and right now, what I see um, as a nation that uh, we are a growing population. We have 30 million kids every year, right, that survive out of 40 million. That's as much as Gujarawala and Faisalabad that we are doing. And there's stunt growth in those kids, right. Um, are we producing assets or liabilities? Those are our future, right. So we need to look at a lot of things. Uh, sorry, I've digressed because I wanted to answer this in the first question. But uh, I feel that, you know, um, the startups need to be really cautious now in terms of how they're expanding because rather than solving 10 problems, solve one problem. Solve one problem. And uh, that's the problem why startups actually are not able to go beyond and why they're going downsizing because they're, they start off with one problem, but then they get into too many things. And that's where they then realize that we've overspent our money, we've burnt our money, and very short-sighted, uh, so that's my two cents on it. Now, as I say, I say that uh, it's not the big eating the small, it's a fast eating the big and small, right? And AI can make you fast, right? It can make, or make you operate. You don't need to change your infrastructure. With the existing infrastructure, you can build that intelligence and you can, voila, start taking benefit of that, that any other major enterprise, multinational, is already taken. If you're a small and, and if you're using AI, you're able to probably outsmart the larger one, right? So, um, you know, there are companies that we, uh, one of our uh, inism, one of our products is actually aspired by uh, Palantir Technologies. Um, it's a $40 billion company in Snowflake. So it's a, we've created a, a data orchestration tool uh, that does anomaly detection. Uh, so fraud or sale, anything is an anomaly, is out of the blue. So, you know, and, and, and those, are, those are interesting things that we're doing. And, and, and for us, Pakistan is a test market. We want to really, really now start taking these products outside. Uh, the things are happening. I mean, you know, just to, uh, in a nutshell, um, a lot of interesting projects are happening. I mean, I personally feel that the kind of projects that ISM is doing uh, or is planning to do, uh, we have not seen any similar player in the market that can do that.